So I think successful painting is, is getting closer to expressing what it is that you feel and think. In other words, your inner vision. Uh, can you tell us a bit about your studio, the things you've got in here, and how they help you uh, paint your pictures? Um, the, the studio, as you see, is, is full of um, the mechanics of painting and also a lot of things you wouldn't necessarily expect to find in an artist's studio from old Victorian coffee pots to arrangements of silk flowers, um, little decorative objects. I get very inspired by patterns and shapes, colour, and these objects are a sort of repository of those, uh, those opportunities to find inspiration in pattern, shape and colour. We're, as, um, as human beings, we're always sceptical and doubtful as to our achievements, and I think that probably spurs us on to revisit the same subjects again and again, year after year. Um, and hopefully, over time, you begin to let go of um, the restraints that are in the way of your uh, journey towards self-expression. So I think successful painting is, is getting closer to expressing what it is that you feel and think. In other words, your inner vision. So here's the Syrian painting, which is called Soul by Soul and Silently, a formal arrangement of refugees that have been evicted from their homes either because the homes have been destroyed by artillery fire or because one of the aggressors has overrun uh, their community. And right, right in the centre is my Pieta from this 14th century Spanish uh, carving which I saw in New York. Um, this little boy here with the head bandage is an adaptation of a figure in a big Gauguin painting. Um, which I've borrowed and slightly altered. Um, these figures here, uh, either side of the Madonna, uh, have come from newspapers uh, that I've been clipping out of in the last year. And then the soldier on the left, um, he's a NATO soldier and he kind of represents the conscience uh, of the West and his hand is outstretched and he's saying I can't help you we don't know what to do with you this is the first sort of complex narrative painting I've painted since I painted a painting of the Bosnian Civil War back in the mid 90s and that's so that's nearly 20 years ago and it may be that I find as time goes on I find ways of expressing the complexity of this kind of subject matter in a way which is perhaps looser and more like right. uh, the style I've used in these flower paintings. Yeah. But I'm not quite there yet. <laughs> <laughs> I, I find teaching fascinating because it necessitates intellectualising what it is that one does emotionally. So when you're painting, you probably don't, at least I don't, hugely intellectualise uh, the process. Um, I just respond to the subject. But in order to help somebody else get to a point where they can respond to the subject, you have to dismantle your process and try and work out what it is that you're thinking and how you organise yourself in order to paint. Um, I do believe that most people have the ability to paint to express themselves artistically, I think people need confidence and they need, you know, they need leading to water and then they'll be able to do it. Uh, I think there are very few people who can't and I think the only criterion that you really need is a, a desire to do it and if you are enthusiastic about having a go at painting, I'm absolutely confident that I can teach you how to do it. But I think there aren't really any rules except possibly one 
single essential criterion, which is that you need to paint with absolute conviction, with absolute passion, and that if you feel that this is the right way of doing it, you can do it in pretty much any way, but you have to have that conviction and you have to maintain that conviction throughout the painting.